Okay, I'm just going to show colleagues how um, I've organised my materials, okay? Um, so, uh, this module, High Tech Crime, used to have a lecture and a seminar, um, and then there was a range of supporting materials on now. But obviously we're not having the lecture and the seminar anymore, and so what I wanted to do was organise my supporting materials um, in a kind of a more compact way, because I wouldn't be kind of helping them, I wouldn't be there in the classroom to kind of point stuff out and help them navigate around and interact with it. So thinking I need to simplify it um, in terms of the structure of the core materials and give them some instructions, okay? Um, so we can't expect the students just to kind of figure it out. It's useful if we give them some directions. If you think in terms of um, Jilly Salmon and scaffolding for those of you who've kind of looked into HE pedagogy, etc. Okay, so what I've done, here's a sample one where um, I, I emailed this information out as well, okay? But I put up the information saying the lecture and seminar for this topic being replaced by some online learning materials. And then there's an instruction, watch the screencast video below, then take the quiz. If you've got further questions, use the FAQ or they can email me. Um, Microsoft Teams coming soon. For the moment, I was happy with these, especially as they're third years and they'll be leaving the university shortly, is they're familiar with email, familiar with the FAQ, and I've already set up an email distribution list for this module. So I probably will switch to some stuff to Microsoft Teams, uh, but it's not desperate and not urgent to do so. So I'm using familiar communication channels with them at this time of uncertainty. Okay, what about the online collection? So what have I done? So I've used a kind of fairly standard layout um, um, over the modules where I've got the replacement materials in. So been replaced by an online learning collection. Each collection consists of four key items. So there's a screen recording summarising the topic, I'll show you a sample in a moment. Link to a quiz so they can test their knowledge. The actual PowerPoint file seen in the re recording. And the lecture record of last year's live lecture. Live lecture okay? So where it's available, and it, I think it was available for three out of the four sessions that I had to convert, um, it made sense to take advantage of the lecture capture recording from last year. I also produced a short screencast video because that allowed me to kind of note any kind of um, topical updates or things like that that would be useful. It also meant I could do a slightly more compact and better audio quality version um, for the students. But where the students might be particularly interested in this topic, I engaged them to watch both. Okay, So um, I'll click on this in a moment so you can go and have a look at it. There's a lecture recording from last year and there's a quiz for them to do. One of the reasons I also provide the original PowerPoint is because some students have gotten in the habit of opening the PowerPoint, so adding their own notes to the notes pages or looking at additional notes that I've added to the PowerPoint slides. Um, so it makes sense to do that because if they're interested in this topic, then they can still download my original PowerPoint, look at the extra notes that I've got in it, okay, and add their own notes and annotations if they want to do so. So that's why I haven't just replaced it with a video. Um, and then I've got some links in that go into kind of some useful supporting documents and various things um, that I've made reference to in emails and I made reference to in the screen capture video. Uh, but crucially, this bit here is the bit where I've, I've tried to put it into four bits and I've done it for the succeeding weeks as well where I've created these online collections. I'll show you another sample one for a different topic um, at some point in this recording. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at this. So I've um, got four things to do. Right, so they take the quiz once they watch the screencast. So here's the um, screencast uh, video that I put in. So I've embedded this into now. I'll just let the start of it go through. So I put some opening titles in, but you don't have to. You can just make a very simple, straightforward screencast recording. Um, and we've got some video guides coming up that will show you how to do that using software that's available. Okay, I'm going to go through our how organised crime exploits technology. Okay, and so now this um, it me runs on. Um, it's a 36 minute recording, it's longer than I intended. Um, but, um, so, so be it, if I could make a shorter one, then maybe that would have been better. Anyway, so this is in lieu of a, a lecture, okay? A lecture catch recording from last year available as well. So if now you're interested in, um, you can listen to this version, which should have quite clear audio, because I'm doing it as a screen capture. 
Um, but there will be a slightly longer version that was from last year's lecture. Um, so okay, so I was making the point there about how I connected that screencast recording, okay, into uh, the other materials from last year. So you can go and watch that recording. They could watch the original screen lecture capture recording from last year. Um, the reason this also has value, um, although it kind of you know it was captured in the lecture, is that because it's been done in Panopto, then people can jump through to kind of key words and key sections of it. So. This combined with the screencast video that I produced, um, I think is you know it works really well together. Having the two of them together, so let me just go back to this bit here. So imagine that we've we've kind of watched the video, the screencast with uh, screen capture video of me going through the PowerPoint. They've got the option to look at this as well. The original material. They can also then do a quiz. So. The quiz is based on the assumption that they've watched the screen capture video. Okay, if they watch the screen capture video, then there's ten questions that they can ask, and I've set it up so that um, they can do multiple goes. So if they get six out of ten or seven out of ten the first time, they can have another go to try and improve their scores. Okay, um, and again, it's set up so that they can submit this. They'll get instant feedback. It tells them what they've got. I can also see who has completed this quiz. And completing the quiz is in lieu of attendance re records, okay? Um, because I can see how many people have viewed the uh, video. And if I routed through now, I could probably find the statistics for individual students to see what they've watched, but that would take quite a long while to do. This way, I've set the quiz up so I get a quick record of who has completed it, um, and the students can complete it more than once should they wish to do so. And the whole point of this is to get them to engage with and having thought about the materials. So that's what I've done. Uh, I'll just show you the collection for a different week. Okay, um, so I'm just showing you the the um, content for another week, right? So it's a similar thing. I put some instructions up, let them know what's going on. They've also been emailed about it. And then in terms of the online collection, I've got can clear set of instructions. So watch the screen capture recording that summarizes the topic. Do the quiz once they've watched item one. Uh, the actual PowerPoint's up there, okay, which they can go and look at, along with the lecture capture recording from last year. Um, so again, if I were to click on this, the idea is that they would click on this, they would go through and watch this. These are also, they've all been uploaded to YouTube as well, and these have just been embedded in. But if I run through the intro bit, uh, and particularly we've got this idea of crime prevention through environmental design septem. So certainly those of you who are criminology students, uh, and it just gives you a sense of the materials in the lecture. So it's me going through, talking about it, I've got a video embedded as well. Okay. So hopefully the students have got a good idea of what they, they need to be doing. I've given them some instructions. The materials are kind of organized neatly and I've tried to replicate that structure to make it easy for them to do. So screencast, do a quiz based on the screencast. Okay. Um, the, the actual PowerPoint presentation that I was using in the screencast, plus a link to last year's lecture recording. So the audio is not quite as good because it was from a live lecture theater, but it has the advantage that it's been processed in Panopto and therefore they can jump to key points within that. Hope colleagues have found that useful, that idea of what kind of things you might want to do. It's entirely up to you what you do, of course, um, but just you know, have some kind of content and then some kind of opportunity for the students to react or give some kind of input um, to the material so they're not just consuming things you put up there passively. So something for them to look at or something for them to work through and then maybe some kind of other response would be quite useful. Okay, good luck with everything.